Oosh! What's up? I'm Brooke, and today I want to talk to you about a little known problem with the AP1, and that is bump steer. Um, this is something you'll hear people talk about at the track quite often, but rarely do people know what their bump steer curve actually looks like. And in order to try to solve the problem, they'll go out and buy bump steer uh, correction pieces, but they will install them based off of guesses or what their friends say. And unfortunately, it's not that easy. It's not something that you just eyeball to make parallel with the lower control arm or the ground. It takes a little bit more time and patience than that. So today we're going to go through how to measure your bump steer and then um, how to adjust it as well. But first, what is bump steer? And bump steer is basically just the tires towing in or out as the suspension cycles through its travel. And this can happen to the rear or the front of the car. And when this does happen, it can make the car quite twitchy in uh, a handful when driving at the limit. And it can also cause uh, something that a lot of us are familiar with, and that is snap oversteer. So, um, what? So what is what causes these bumps here? So it can be it can be inherently designed into the suspension itself. Um, worn bushings can cause bumps steer. Bent members of your suspension can cause it. Um, a very common one is lowering your vehicle can cause bump steer. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of different reasons why it can happen, but with a little bit of time and patience, you can actually significantly reduce your bump steer. Um, you know, ideally you want zero, but that's a little bit uh, easier said than done. But I'll go through it and we'll show you how I was able to lower mine quite a bit. But before we get down to brass tacks, you wanted to take a, a measurement basically to get where your vehicle ride height is. So I always put a piece of tape and put a little mark here, but you want to get a measurement between the center of your hub and then your fender basically. And we'll start from there and then we'll jack the car up and uh, start measuring some stuff and get down to it. Okay, so here's the setup that I've been using. To measure the bump steer, it's uh, this piece of equipment I bought from Long Acre. It's about 250 bucks. Um, I have seen cheaper options that people do some homemade stuff online, so you can do a quick search and find something like that. But this is uh, able to make some pretty good measurements, and it's pretty easy to use. So I think it's worth worth the money. Um, so just real quick, basically all you use is a standard floor jack I put it under the uh, lower ball joint nut and just jack the suspension up to make your measurements um, in order to do that I just remove the lower shock bolt from uh, the bottom of the shock and just kicked it out of the side and that allows me to cycle the suspension entirely top to bottom um, so in order to set this up you have to bolt this plate to your hub and I used a couple of wheel spacers and so I didn't have to remove the caliper so space it out a little bit but there's a couple of things you want to monitor while taking measurements and one of the important ones is there is a uh, level indicator right here a little bubble bubble gauge and that's something that will kind of uh, move as you cycle the suspension up and down so make sure you keep an eye on that and always take your measurements with that leveled out um, so in order to start, you use your first, that measurement we took earlier, and just set your suspension to where it would be as if the car was flat on the ground with the weight on the tires. Um, once you have that, make sure you level your plate, and then you'll, you'll zero out everything. So your, your dial indicator will be on the zero mark, and then you also want to zero out your dial indicator as well. And from here, you're, gonna, you're probably going to want to take a bunch of measurements, especially at first, to get a more uh, repeatable measurement. But one thing to watch out for is I noticed that my jack kind of kept hitting the side of this um, device and, and causing it to skew my measurements, so keep an eye out for that. But So once you have everything set up and your suspension where it should be, you want to. Um, I was basically jacking it up um, in half inch increments, um, so I just slowly start moving the suspension up. So as you can see, the, the bubble gauge has moved a little bit, so you kind of want to keep, just keep bumping it the other way, actually. Just to get 
they're back centered. And so there I'm at a half inch. I think we've got we've moved uh, three four thousandths of an inch on the on the dial under here. So so basically you want to do this at half inch increments until you basically bottomed out the suspension and then once you've got measurements that you trust and you've got repeated and consistent, then I would do uh, and rebound and get the as much as you can going down to the suspension is fully topped out. So once you've taken all your measurements, I think I only had about three and a half inches of total stroke in the rear of my S2000 here, so there's not that many measurements, but once you have all of them, I went ahead and plotted them in Excel so I could see what my curve actually looks like to see if I'm getting toe in or toe out and etc. So let's take a look at those graphs. All right, check it out. The horizontal line here represents where the suspension is at resting on level ground. So moving above this line, the suspension is being compressed, moving below, and it is being extended. Traversing rightward signi signifies toe out, leftward is toe in. As you can see, there are four different curves, and that is because I have aftermarket adjustable toe arms. And if you aren't familiar with these, I will show them after looking at this graph. But in short, they are adjustable in two ways. The outer ball joint or heim joint can be raised or lowered via shims and then the length of the arm is also adjustable. Taking a look at the legend in the lower left hand corner, the first number signifies the amount of shims above the ball joint and the second is the amount of shims below the ball joint. So looking at the yellow curve, there is one shim above the ball joint and three below. This was the worst case that I measured it had significant toe in on compression and toe out on rebound. The gray line gave a decent curve, but I still wanted to see if more bumps here could be dialed out. So I tried three shims above and one below. And this, this gave me a significant reduction in toe change in the middle of the suspension travel. But as the suspension neared full compression or extension, there was large amounts of toe in. So after reading Long Acre's tips on their website, this led me to believe that the toe arm was too short. So in order to lengthen the toe arm, I first adjusted the factory toe eccentric to move the inner pivot point further inboard. And in, and in order to reduce uh, skewing my alignment, I measured the eccentric before and after so I know how much to lengthen the arm. I was able to lengthen the arm a total of five millimeters this adjustment led to the green curve. This configuration gave me the least amount of toe change and also led to toe in during extension which should help tighten up the car a bit while trail braking which is something I struggle with. Here is a picture of one of my Nagisa Auto rear toe arms. As I said they are adjustable in two ways. The first being the ability to raise or lower the outer heim joint via shims and the second being the ability to shorten or lengthen the arm. The lengthening is done by loosening both jam nuts and turning the body similar to a turnbuckle. This is the factory toe eccentric that I use to move the inner heim joint inboard to accommodate for the lengthening of the toe arm. So I hope this video helped you better understand bump steer and how to adjust it. It may seem like a pretty involved process and if it's too much for you, a good race shop should be able to help you out. I know since I've made the adjustments, my car is a little bit more stable and easier to control, especially through rougher sections of track. So anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you out there.